Deer season is closed in most places and folks are either out looking for sheds or scouting for signs. When the snow's on, it's a little bit easier to find that sign this time of year. Wow, look at that beef. <laughs> These adventures are fun and can provide useful information about the habitat that they were using during the late season. We recently partnered with Moultrie Mobile and I've been experimenting with their cameras and the app that allows me not only to see the habitat they're using, but allows me to very easily relate that to the temperature, time of day, and moon phase. We're getting great quality images and videos that are easy to share with our team members and our friends. When I say share, I'm not talking about the traditional go out, pull a card, sort all through it, figure out where the bucks are, and then, you know, forward those to my buddies. I'm talking about the Moultrie mobile app that makes all that so much easier. Even better, the app can accurately identify antlered bucks, does, turkeys, etc., and put all those on a server where you can instantly view them on your phone, laptop, whatever. But take that another step further, it plots that data in easy to understand graphs so you can see how temperature, time of day, or moon phase is related to deer activity exactly where you hunt. I gotta tell you, I'm still learning all the capabilities of the Moultrie mobile cameras and app, but what I'm seeing so far, I sure wish I'd had that during graduate school because it's much more advanced than way more expensive tools I used to use. Just as an example of using this system to learn about deer activity where you hunt, Pretty major cold front recently passed here at the Proving Grounds and throughout much of the Whitetails Range. On February 22nd this year, during the mid-morning, the temperature was about 59 degrees, but by that night, it had dropped to 19 degrees. We used Google to check the average high and low for this location on February 22nd, and the high is about 50 degrees, and the low is about 40. So when the temperature hit 19 degrees that night, that's a 52% lower temperature than normal. Purr, I mean, that's significant, 52% colder than normal. Now, I know how I responded. I put some more oak on the fire in my fireplace, but I was really curious, how do deer actually respond to those conditions? A Couple of days later, I used the app to check deer movement about the week ahead of that big drop, that big cold front and then during the cold front, just to see if there was a detectable pattern of how that weather front impacted deer activity. Leading up to the cold front, temperatures were pretty close to normal and most of deer activity was around dawn and dusk. What you'd expect, deer are known as crepuscular animals. They tend to move about sunrise and sunset more than any time throughout the day. The morning of the 23rd, the temperature dropped to 16 degrees. Whew, way colder than normal. Checked the Motri app and there was almost no deer movement. There was a few and you'd expect a few. They're getting up, moving around, going to bed on the sunny side of the ridge or something like that. Maybe a coyote jumped them, but not much compared to the previous days. But that afternoon, the temperature warmed up pretty significantly. Those deer got on their feet and started going for calories. They started to feed because there's a big spike in movement late that afternoon, just before dark. It's important to note that warm-ups are relative. You know, like in the spring, you've been cold all winter in a 50 degree day, or right now it's 50 plus couple. I only got a, you know, a vest on, a t-shirt, I'm doing just fine. But in the fall, that first time you get in the tree stand, it's been 70 and 80 and it drops to 50, you're going, man, I need my big coat on, I'm freezing out here. It's all relative to what you're conditioned to. You know, 16 in the morning and 19 in the afternoon, you can understand why the deer got on their feet and moved to feed. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Hunt Stand, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Burris Optics, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and redneck hunting blinds. I believe this is a great example, not just based on one data point, several cameras out in the field and a lot of deer detected or no deer seen, depending on if you're talking morning or afternoon, of how weather can influence when deer are active. 
By using this Moultrie system, we can learn how weather impacts deer wherever we hunt. It's probably different in Canada. You know, 19's not that cold in Canada, and 19 here in Missouri, or maybe in South Texas, South Alabama, it would be wicked cold. So you don't have to take a study published in one location. You can learn how weather, moon phase, whatever, impacts deer activity exactly where you hunt. I know many grown deer viewers are very experienced outdoorsmen. And y'all know that trail cameras don't pick up all deer activity. Deer move where there's not a camera, you don't have a camera on every tree, or you get you know, a single deer moving at a time with no other deer moving, it's likely a predator or human or something jumped that deer and maybe pushed it in front of a, a camera. So this is an absolute, but you don't hunt by absolutes, you hunt by trends. We wanna put the odds in our favor to know where and when to hunt. And this is one of the best tools I've seen that allows us to study that on a site-specific or property-by-property property basis. Keep in mind that trail cameras report past data. It's not like you're sitting there going, oh, I need to hunt right here. You're gonna learn from this and then watch the upcoming weather and have a better accuracy of knowing where you should hunt because you have more knowledge to use to pick those stand or blind locations. There have been a lot of GPS studies published that show about the same thing on average. We know that deer are crepuscular. Most of their movement in normal conditions are gonna be at dawn and dusk. GPS collars are wonderful for studying the home range or tracking an individual deer, how they're moving through the day, exactly where they bed. You gotta capture the deer, you gotta have a permit. Guys like you and I can't do that. But with the cameras, we have an opportunity to monitor the entire herd. For what I like to do, learning about how deer use habitat and what time of day, the factors that influence when deer are active, and knowing that the Moultrie cameras are less than 100 bucks and how powerful the app is, I gotta tell you, this is a great tool for me and likely a great tool for you. Not only do I enjoy studying and learning about deer, I'm just as passionate about turkeys. And turkey season's coming up, our Moultrie's have been picking up some a lot of jakes on the property, you know, when those jakes get together a little bit later on, form those bully basher groups, they can really determine which decoys you can use or your hunting strategies, because sometimes those toms are a little leery to come in if they think there's jakes already there. So cameras can be a great way to learn about your turkey flock and plan your hunting strategy accordingly. Learning how weather, temperature, moon phase, etc., impact daily deer activity is a great way to learn more about creation. But even more importantly, we all need to be intentional and seek the Creator's will for our life and apply it every day. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.